All right, now we're going to look at constraints. Constraints are set up so I don't mess up things as far as, you know, the rotation on this would not go this way. The rotation might go a little this way, but not much. But you can notice that if I touch this just very basically, it starts rotating in a million degrees. Notice that these bones are set to Euler. So each bone you should go through and set it to Euler instead of Quaterion. Now, and I can't, uh, I won't get into the difference between Quaterion and Euler. Euler is okay for just basic animations. If things go spinning in different directions all at the same time, use Quaterion to, to prevent gimbal lock. But other than that, this um, is fine and it's very easy to understand. Another thing that you gotta know is if, let's say I rotate this bone, how do I ever get it back to zero? Well, I can go right here, right click and say, reset all to default values. Okay, so that's a fast way to do that. It's default zero is clashing in here just a little bit. So that's why I'm gonna add a constraint in here. So I'm gonna move it right here and I'm gonna say that is negative 1.5. Well, how do I do this? Here, I'm gonna add a constraint. There's a bone in a chain, that's the constraint. I'm gonna say limit rotation. And I'm gonna limit the rotation based upon uh, local space, not world space. Here's why. Let's say I do it on world space. If I put zero, 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 or zero, zero on here, I'm limited on Y, on world space, you can see that it shoots the finger straight up in the air, one, and does some really nasty stuff. Also, if I rotate it at the wrist, notice the finger is starting to move because it's based itself on world space. Okay, well, let me get rid of that world space. Uh, let me rotate the bone back. Reset all to default. And then we're gonna put a constraint in here that will allow it not to freak out like that. So local space is what we want. Based upon the local rotation of that local bone. And for this, I'm just gonna put negative one. And for this one, I'm gonna put 90. I'm rotating it on Z. And it might not look that I'm rotating it on Z, but it, this is local space. So local space does, con it switches the Y and Z properties. So this is actually Z now. And you can see what happened. Now I can only rotate this way and only rotate this way. All right, now, um, if I do this, Point five and one point five. Oops, or is it X? Yep, oops. Yeah, that local space gets you every time. One point five. There we go. And zero. This one I'm going to set to zero and zero. And there we go. Now the finger doesn't clash with the other finger. Plus, I can't move it any other way. It jingles a little bit, but that's okay. Um, then I can rotate it this way, which is fine. But I cannot rotate it this way. So that's what you have to do is set up each bone to kind of have that. So here's another workflow. You go in here, you say limit rotation. You put it on local space, and then you lock out X and Y, unless you have a problem like I did on this bone, but I fixed that problem here. And then you say, well, for the rotation up, you know, you can bend your fingers just a little bit up. I always put like a negative one here, and most of the time it is 90 degrees. So let's bend this finger and see what we can do now. We can bend it here.
And then I can bend the finger this way. Good. Could I ever go further? Well, in order for that to happen, I would have to add one more joint into the mix right here to bend it up. Since it's a robot, I didn't account for that and just I'm just going to leave it the way it is. If I wanted to go past 90 degrees on this joint, I could. Just so he has some kind of grip. And I could probably go past 90 degrees on this one. So there we go. Now he has more of a grip. But what I would do is now make sure that you know these numbers, 105. Because what you're going to have to do for each joint is go in here and add a constraint. Add limit rotation. Bam, bam. Bam. Negative 1. And then 105. And then don't forget local space, or it'll freak out. Same thing. So get your constraints in there. There's going to be different constraints for everything. Everything's going to be constrained a little bit differently. So the wrist is going to look a little different than anything else. Also, if you have any weighing issues, now's a really good time to kind of look at those. Like... Here, for instance, maybe this bottom plate right here looks a little organic. So I'll give you a little hint on things. If you don't take it and assign it to everything at a 1, it'll look organic. And there's some things that look organic and it definitely things that I do not want looking organic. So in this case, what I do is I hit L on the mesh, go into the vertex group, and then I say the wrist is a one. So I'll raise this up to a one, assign it, and the forearm is maybe something like zero for this piece. But the other two pieces, they do have kind of a techno-organic look to them, so what I did is for those pieces, the wrist, I put it 1, but the forearm, I put it like 0.25. And that means when he bends his wrist, it's going to displace those plates just a little bit. I gotta go back to pose mode. You can see him kind of move just a little bit as far as displacement goes. Okay, again, if you want to get back everything, reset all to default. Unfortunately, you can't do that for very many at one time. You can only do it one at a time. There is a rest pose that's located here. And once it's in rest pose, you can't move anything. But the minute you go back to pose, position, it then goes back to its original pose and then you still have to zero out all. There we go. Now, please move on to the next video where I can cover some more.